Vanguard and Fidelity are currently the heavyweights in the money-growing game. Both of them have got all these cool tools that can really help you if you've got some investing experience under your belt. But the big question is, Vanguard or Fidelity? Which one's better for you? Deciding between two great options for where to put your money to work is not easy, but I am here to help you figure out which one might be your money's best friend. And be sure to keep around until the last point because the costs involved with investing in both may surprise you. All right, so first off, let's talk about how big these companies are and what they believe in when it comes to investing your money. Size and Investment Philosophy Fidelity has been around since way back in 1946. It was started by a guy named Edward C. Johnson II. From the get-go, Fidelity was all about picking companies that would grow fast, like Xerox and Polaroid back in the 1950s. Fast forward to today, and Fidelity is this massive company that helps over 43 million people with their investments. They also help lots of businesses with their employee benefits programs. That's a lot of trust in Fidelity. And Vanguard. This one came into the picture in 1975, started by a really famous investor named John Bogle. Vanguard took a different approach. They're huge on spreading out your investments to reduce risk. That's called diversification. And we're actually the first to offer the public an index mutual fund. This idea is about investing for the long haul and not spending a lot of money on fees. Today, Vanguard is a big deal in the investing world, serving more than 50 million investors. So if you're into a company that's big on picking growth stocks and has a long history of doing so, Fidelity might be your jam. But if you like the idea of keeping costs low and sticking to a long-term investment plan, then Vanguard could be the way to go. All right, moving on to the next big thing when picking between Vanguard and Fidelity is the types of accounts and investment options they offer. This is super important whether you're saving up for your golden years or setting aside some cash for your kid's college fund. Both Vanguard and Fidelity have a bunch of choices to fit your needs. Vanguard is pretty much a powerhouse in the arena of planning for retirement. They've got all kinds of retirement accounts. Think Roth and traditional IRAs, 403B plans, individual 401ks, and even options for people who work for themselves or run their own business. And when it comes to what you can invest in, Vanguard offers a ton of low-cost mutual funds, exchange-traded funds, ETFs, stocks, and more. They're all about making sure you've got a diversified portfolio, which is just a fancy way of saying they help you spread your investments around so you're not putting all your eggs in one basket. Now let's talk Fidelity. They've also got retirement accounts, but they throw in a few more options that might catch your eye, like health savings accounts. And while Vanguard's big on those diversified investments and mutual funds, Fidelity gives you a bit more to pick from. For instance, if you're interested in dipping your toes into cryptocurrencies, Fidelity's got you covered, whereas Vanguard doesn't offer that option. All right, moving on to our next comparison point, how well these investments have done over time and what they're costing you. Vanguard really changed the game when they introduced index funds, which are like baskets of stocks or bonds that track a specific market index. They've got a huge variety of these funds, and they're known for not charging you a lot to invest in them. This is super important because lower fees mean more of your money stays invested and can grow over time. Fidelity isn't far behind with their selection of funds. They've got a lot to choose from, just like Vanguard. But on the whole, they tend to charge a bit more for their funds. Now here's a cool twist. Fidelity offers some funds that don't cost anything to invest in. Yep, zero cost funds. That's a pretty sweet deal. So in a face-off on performance and cost between Vanguard and Fidelity, think about what matters most to you. Are low fees the biggest deal? Or are you looking for a specific type of fund, even if it might cost a bit more? This comparison can help you figure out which company might be a better fit for your investment style. Next thing is about management styles. There are active and passive management styles to think about. Active management is like having a personal coach for your investments. The coach or fund manager 
picks and chooses stocks, trying to outsmart the market to get you more money. But because there's a lot of work involved, it usually costs more. Vanguard isn't just about index funds. They've got some standout active funds, too, like the Vanguard Advice Select International Growth Fund. It focuses on companies outside the U.S. with big growth potential and charges a fee of 0.42%. Fidelity's not left out. They've got their own, like the Fidelity International Growth Fund, with a bit higher fee at 1.01% and a keen eye on Japan. But trying to beat the market is super tricky. A study showed that over five years, not a single mutual fund could consistently outdo the market. It's a bit of a reality check on active management. On the other hand, passive management is more laid back. Instead of trying to beat the market, these funds mirror the market's moves. It's like having a playlist that matches the top 40 hits, note for note. Because it's less hands-on, the costs are lower, which is greater for your wallet over time. Vanguard's big on this, leading the charge with their index funds, offering everything from broad market funds to specific themes like ESG, environmental, social, and governance funds. Fidelity's got a strong game here too, with a variety of index funds that cover all sorts of markets, including sustainable options. They've got funds like the Fidelity 500 Index Fund and the Fidelity U.S. Sustainability Index Fund. One thing to note, the little things can make a big difference, like fees and minimum investment amounts. Fidelity shines with its zero minimum investment on many funds, making it super accessible if you're just starting or want to dip your toes in without diving deep. Vanguard often asks for at least $3,000 to get started on many of their funds. All right, next is about a cool option for those who prefer a more hands-off approach to investing. Robo Advisors. It's like having a smart robot buddy that takes care of your investments, rebalancing your portfolio, and handling dividends for you. It's like autopilot for your money, adjusting your investments based on your goals and the market. Now, onto what Vanguard and Fidelity offer in this space. Vanguard has something called Vanguard Digital Advisor. To get started, you'll need $3,000. This digital buddy focuses on ETFs, exchange-traded funds, giving you options like all passive ETFs, a mix of active and passive ETFs, or even ETFs that follow environmental, social, and governance ESG criteria. The first 90 days are on the house, free of charge. After that, the cost is up to 0.25% in advisory fees, depending on what you pick. Then there's Fidelity Go, Fidelity's take on the robo-advisor. The cool part? There's no minimum investment to start, making it super accessible for beginners or anyone wanting to try it out without committing a lot of money up front. Your investments go into Fidelity Flex mutual funds, which can include a mix of domestic and foreign stocks, bonds, and other short-term investments. Fidelity Go is pretty wallet-friendly, too. If your account balance is under $25,000, you pay no advisory fee. For balances of $25,000 or more, the fee is 0.35% a year, and that includes unlimited calls for one-on-one -on -one coaching. Finally, the last key area that could sway your decision between Vanguard and Fidelity is the costs involved. Both Vanguard and Fidelity are pretty friendly when it comes to your wallet especially for online trades of stocks, options, and ETFs. They charge $0 commissions for U.S.-based customers. However, there are some differences when you dig into the details. For instance, if you're into options, Fidelity charges a $0.65 cent fee per contract, which is a bit cheaper than Vanguard's $1. When it comes to getting help from a broker for stock trades, Fidelity asks for $32.95, while Vanguard is a bit lighter on your pocket at $25. And if mutual funds are your jam, especially those outside the no transaction fee family, Fidelity's fee is $49.95 compared to Vanguard, where you might pay nothing or up to $20 per trade, depending on how much money you have in your account. Margin rates, which matter if you're borrowing money to invest, are pretty close between the two 
with Vanguard at 10.75% for $10,000 and Fidelity slightly lower at 10.575%. To sum up the whole discussion, if you're someone who likes to be in the driver's seat, actively trading and tweaking your investments, Fidelity could be your go-to. Their platform and tools are tailor-made for those who want to get hands-on, offering lots of flexibility and options for day traders or anyone who likes to keep a close eye on their portfolio. On the flip side, if you're more about setting up your investments and then focusing on other things in life, Vanguard might be more your speed, especially if you're into index investing or looking for a bit of guidance with a robo-advisor. Vanguard's got this personal advisor services for folks who can start with a $50,000 account, offering more personal investment advice and help building your portfolio. Plus, Vanguard tends to have slightly lower expense ratios on its index funds, which can save you money in the long run. If dividend ETFs are your thing, you might want to watch this video next to see who's better between SCHD or SPHD.